Safai. Well, thank you. Developing now, we continue to dig into a report that claims Governor Robert Bentley had an affair with his former top aide, Rebecca Mason. The governor spent most of Friday trying to prevent the report from being released. But in the end, the House Judiciary Committee won the legal battle. The documents explain how Governor Bentley's now ex-wife knew about her husband's relationship, tipped off by his own technology. CBS 42 News reporter Brittany Bivens looks through the documents and has more details about Bentley's relationship with his wife during his alleged affair with Mason. The House Judiciary Committee's 130-page report on Governor Bentley's alleged affair includes these exhibits, text messages, exchanges between him and his married political aide, Rebecca Mason, texts Diane Bentley could see because he was sending them from his iPhone, and Diane had his iPad. The governor did not know the devices were connected through the cloud function. The report alleges it was this evidence that tipped off Mrs. Bentley and other family members to the affair. In one exchange, Bentley accidentally sends his wife a text reading, I love you, Rebecca. In another case, the report says Mr. and Mrs. Bentley attended a Washington, D.C. dinner with Rebecca Mason. Bentley sent her a text saying, I can't take my eyes off you. Later that night, the report says Mason bragged about the governor, telling her he had opened the hotel room door clad only in boxers, thinking it was her. It was hotel staff. Now, Governor Bentley's legal team released a statement saying, in part, we will review Friday's document dump, which appears to be an, an, an amalgamation of hearsay, rumor, and innuendo. The governor has continued to deny any wrongdoing. Now, all of what happened in Montgomery yesterday is just another part in a series of events that began in March of last year. We've put together a timeline of all the events dealing with the Governor Bentley scandal on our website, WIT.com. Now, right now, a family wants answers after a father of two was hit by a car and left to die on the side of the road. Orrin Austin was just steps away from his home in Bessemer when he was struck by a speeding car along 9th Avenue North late Thursday night. So far, police have not made any arrests in the case. Yesterday, Austin's family and friends said they have plenty of questions and they're hopeful police will find whoever killed their loved one. I'm sure that you know you hit a human. And I want to know why did you not stop? Why did you not stop? We're hurting here. We're heartbroken. Ori was well liked in the community. He had a radiant personality. You couldn't be around him and not love him. Now, police believe the vehicle that hit Austin is a dark colored SUV. If you know anything that could help investigators, call Bessemer Police. Also happening now, two men caught on camera breaking into a Tarrant pawn shop. Now authorities want your help to identify them. Take a look at this video. The ATF says the pair broke into Scott's Jewelry and Pawn on Penson Valley Parkway Wednesday. They were able to grab 17 guns before running from the scene. Authorities are offering a $7,500 reward for information leading to an arrest and conviction. If you know who these two are, call Tarrant Police. Now, continuing coverage now, Swedish police make an arrest after a truck barrels over pedestrians on a crowded street, killing at least four people and wounding another 15. Six people have been released from the hospital so far. Authorities say the incident is a terror attack. Now, the company that owns the truck involved says the suspect hijacked the vehicle as it made a delivery nearby. The attack prompted lockdowns at Swedish Parliament and the city's subway system as police searched for the suspect. Police say the man in custody now matches the description of a person of interest. So far, they have not confirmed if he was the driver. Of course, I'm shocked. Everyone is shocked. But I also feel a lot of warmness when I saw how the police was prepared, the people of Stockholm, who they were care, take care of people, they were very helpful. And I think that's the way to go. Now, no terrorist groups have made an immediate claim of responsibility for the attack. New this morning, a mudslide in Oakland, California, leaves three homes damaged. At least 12 homes have been evacuated. The mudslide started just below a road, causing significant damage as it made its way towards the homes. One woman says he had a sea of mud and water inside of, how, inside of her house. A firefighter came to her house Thursday night to tell her to evacuate. Came down and I guess came through the back bedroom and bathroom and down through the hallway and then all through the patio. It burst through and started coming down our yard really fast. Another homeowner says she had a wall of mud in her backyard. The homeowners say everyone wanted to rain at wanted to run at the beginning of the rain at the win, beginning of winter, but this is just too much. 
Now, new this morning, nationwide protests break out after President Trump orders airstrikes against Syrian military targets. Protesters gathered on, on, the East Coast, on the East Coast, many simply saying there isn't enough proof the Assad regime conducted chemical weapon attacks against the Syrian people. They also condemn U.S. intervention in a foreign conflict. Activists in San Francisco were met by some pushback by those supporting the airstrikes. The reasonable approach would be to, first of all, wait for the investigation. Secondly, the U.S. has no place to punish anybody. The U.S. should be punished for its murders that is committed in Syria and Iraq. Syria did some pretty nasty things, and we should have some kind of a response. I don't know if that was the right one, but we needed to do something. They say they don't believe the strikes were a direct response to the chemical weapons and would rather see millions of dollars in defense funds spent on social programs here at home. New this morning, a brush fire in western Broward County, Florida, is more than 5,000 acres. Flames are now within 80 feet of Max Fish Camp in the southernmost area of Broward County. The popular fish camp had to be evacuated Friday morning, but firefighters were able to contain that fire in the area. A dense smoke advisory is in place of of most of Broward and Miami-Dade counties this morning. The fire is at least 45% contained. Now, continuing coverage, if you're planning to drive to Atlanta anytime soon, you might want to rethink those plans. Atlanta Mayor Kasim Reed says travel times will substantially increase as a stretch of I-85 remains closed. Many Atlanta schools were on spring break this week, temporarily easing traffic congestion since I-85 closed. But Mayor Kasim Reed says travel times will increase by 30 percent once schools are back in session Monday. Reed is urging companies to consider letting employees work from home or change schedules. He's also asking everyone to make sure they have a full tank of gas at all times. Now, happening today, a staple of downtown Birmingham will be open in just a few minutes from now. The market at Pepper Place is back. The market features the live demonstrations from chefs, plus locally grown fruits and vegetables. Local musicians and artists are also featured at the market. You can find the market from 29th Street and into the Martin Biscuit parking lot next to Cantina Tortilla Grill. The market at Pepper Place is open from 7 until noon. Now your time now is 639. Easter is around the corner, and if you're expecting chocolate in your basket, you might want to rethink it. We explain why next. Michael? All right. Thank you, Stefan. Looking forward to that. Live look outside. The Magic City looks nice, feels a little cool as we kick off our weekend. Temperatures in the 30s and 40s. We're going to talk about a weekend warm-up right after this.